Hey Scotch Heads, how you doing? I hope it doesn't sound too cheesy. But anyways, I've got a special video. In my previous videos, I indicated I had something special today. I'm going to try to make this uh, not too long, but considering we have sitting in front of us right here, it's going to be probably 10, 11, 12 minutes at least, but definitely worth it. Alright, so we're going to compare these three R bags with something else. You may know what it is now, but it's a festival scotch. Anyways, I've been uh, waiting to taste this, and so I poured a small drum, dram drum, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, of uh, the Cory Vrekin, as Ralphie says it, uh, the Ugadal and the Ten, and these three uh, blend carrying glasses here, and the Mystery Scotch is going to go in here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this bad boy. And by the way, there's not a whole lot of reviews on this going around. I think none on YouTube. I think there's a one in German. Anyways, this is English. Okay, for all you English people speaking people. We have the Ardbed Ardbog Festival Scotch. <clears throat> yep, there it is. There it is, guys. The Ardbog uh, is phenomenal Scotch. And let me tell you, it is definitely different than these three expressions right here. And the big reason why is the way it is matured. And I'll get that to you in just a second. Let's open the box up. I've been waiting to try, uh, do this video for a week. All right. The box is standard. And real quick before I move on, I was reading some things about this scotch. And from the, from the get-go, I think this is going to be very earthy scotch. Just from reading a few things. The top of the box right here, you can see it clearly. But I'll read it to you. It says, cut three foot into the bog and you'll have dug 1,000 years into the past. Dig deeper and you'll discover peat formed from prehistoric vegetation. So I'm thinking vegetal, vegetable and very earthy is it gonna be. So let's go ahead and pour a glass of this. Awesome cork sound. Now real quick, I think the Ugadal bottle has the best cork sound. I love that. Anyways, okay. Let's go ahead and pour. Now I'm going to compare it to these, at least, uh, at least to the Ugadals would be real important because Ugadal was matured in the Oloroso with the American oak. Ardbog was matured in American oak and a sherry cask known as Manzanilla. Okay, or it's manzanilla. If you you know, it looks manzanilla, but in Spanish, manzanilla. Okay, real quick, this is how you're going to pronounce that. Manzanilla. Manzanilla. Manzanilla is a Spanish word for chamomile. There you go. Chamomile tea is very earthy. It literally means little apple which refers to the fact that the smell of chamomile is reminiscent of apple. Spanish word for apple was manzana. There you go. Now real quick on this scotch before we get into the tasting notes, is that manzanilla is a form of the sherry. Of course, you know, Oloroso is real popular for uh, maturing whiskeys and the, and, the, and, the, and the sherry butts. But this one here was produced in the port of, and I hope I say this right, port of San Lucar, San Lucar de Baraneda. Okay, now, the manzanilla sherry is made in the same way as the vino sherry, but the cool sea temperatures mean that the yeast often grows better, from the, from, I guess from the port, resulting in a thicker layer of yeast protects the wine from the air, even further giving the sherry an even finer, more delicate flavor than the other sherries. So, again, more earthy, in my opinion, as I'm reading this. Alright, let's go ahead and move on. I got some notes in front of me here because there's a lot a lot going on right now, okay? <clears throat> My throat is a little groggy, sorry I was at a concert Saturday night, so I'm trying to get through this without, you know, sounding weird or anything. Anyways, we have the Ardbeg 10, Ugadal, Corey Vrecken right here. The color on this is 
darker than the Koi Reckon. Close to Ugadol because Ugadol was finished off in the Sherry Casks. I think this is a little darker because of the Manzanilla Casks, I'm, I'm assuming. Not a whole lot darker, but a little, a little more amber, I think. And the 10, not even close. Alright, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the Corey Reckon real quick. Um, and the Corey Reckon, as we know, is one of my favorite scotches of all time. This scotch is just amazing. You get a lot of the salt, briny sea sea salt water, uh, fruity tones, a lot of vanilla, wood, that sort of thing. And on the nose, you get with this with the Corey Reckon, you get that salty zest seaweed right in your face. Followed by the peat and the vegetable notes, you get that. That's I love this too. I haven't done a review on these yet. I've just been doing some reviews here recently, in the last month and a half, so I'm kind of new online on YouTube for reviewing scotches. But I will do a more of a comprehensive view on these. But real quick, I wanted to you know, do this because of the uh, art bug coming in. Corvecan is really, really salty, seaweedy, briny, medicinal, band-aids. Uh, get the vanilla, creamy vanilla. You got some uh, toffee, caramel notes in this. Now, Ugadol, as we know, was finished in the Spanish casks. Okay, so was, I'm going to expect a little similarities between Ugadol and Arbog. Definitely different than the Cory Reckon. You get the a um, lot of traits of on Cory Reckon and Arbeg, but then you have that very subtle sherry influence. It's not a lot, to be honest with you. It's not a lot of sherry influence. It's there on the nose. You can pick it up in the background. Okay. Now the ten, you know, this is definitely a different different beast, but. We're going to compare this with this as well. So, so real quick, let's, let's do this real quick. Okay, the Ugadol. Okay, nose. I'm going to nose the Ardbog right here. Very interesting with the Ardbog. Is I get that. Very interesting. Check this out. Very interesting. With this, this is bottled at, and sorry I didn't mention this earlier, at 52.1% and Ugadol is 54%. Not a big difference. But with this, I can stick my nose deep into this glass and I can really, neat by the way, no water added. I can really inhale this and I, and I, don't, I get no burning on here at all. I'm guessing because of the Manzanilla casks. It has to be. Now this is this is similar, but it's got the more of a salty influence. But this is definitely very easy to nose. Very, very easy to nose. Now the ten. Hmm. Yeah, so the ten, in my opinion, the ten is you know very good as well. Um, reminds me of the Freud ten, but but the, with the Arbeg traits with the more more salty, you know, medicinal properties to it. All right, now that I've tasted these, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the mouth out and taste the right bog. All right, so far on the nose, I think the art bog is a concoction between Ugadol and the Ten. I think the Quarry of Reckon is more tense than our bog is. How? Very interesting. Wow. Okay, so I'm gonna go with that. This, the Ardbog, in my opinion, is more of an intense Ardbeg 10. But this definitely has the earth, very dark, earthy, 
vegetable tones in it, like the box said. Definitely darker scotch. I get a lot of soil, dirt, rubber, and there's some smoke there, but the peat is there too, but the, um, the fruity, dark, vegetable, earthy soil, all that stuff comes first. And the peat and the smoke is right behind that. And it's almost a nice, it's almost like a, like a nice, even transition. It seems very balanced between all those notes put together. But the peat, the salt, the Ardbeg is known for, is, is right behind that. Definitely um, a darker, earthy scotch. I also get a lot of smoked meats on this. Like a, like, um, between barbecue chicken and like, like salty pork. I get, I get that smoked meat in this, definitely. There's some vanilla and some caramel in this as well. But I get that, I get that dark fruit that comes out with Ardbog. So I was right about that. And it was interesting, the reason why they um, uh, compared it to the, um, hold on a second, the reason why I wanted to uh, tell you about the Manzanilla cast because the palate and the nose on this reflects that of the way it was matured in the Manzanilla cast, giving it more of, a, more of that earthy vegetable n uh, nose, especially in the palate. Definitely a darker scotch, very good. Now, I ordered this scotch online in Minnesota from a place called Merwin Liquors. I can't get it where I live. I'm in Florida. can't get it here anywhere at all. So uh, I got that online and I grabbed the bottle. I'm going to probably buy another one because it's limited. I don't know how many bottles that they make of this stuff, but definitely um, is worth picking this up. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this review. And like I said, I'm going to put a more comprehensive view on these three individually in the next few weeks. Uh, subscribe uh, to my channel. And I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm just trying to think if let have left anything else out on this. Um, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, definitely, uh, I'm going to say it again. I don't want to be redundant and repeat myself over and over again. But um, I want to say that this is definitely between the 10 and the Ugadol, right in the middle. But you've got that earth tones come first. Now that I stopped drinking this the last couple minutes, the finish is real nice. It's still there in the palate. I still get that meat. I get the. I think the smoke lingers on too, a little longer. But everything is right there on the palate. And it's still there. It's a nice finish. I like it. I give it a thumbs up. I don't have any fancy cards to give it a rating. But uh, I'm going to say, you know, with the Corey Breck and Ugadal, I'm going to give these guys, I mean, I'm going to say a 92, 91, 92, easily. I think this is on par with these two guys right here. Uh, definitely check this out. Subscribe, comment, and I hope you enjoyed it again. And have a great day, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot.